Hi there, I'm Jordan Hillary with The Daily National, and today we're talking about wine. We all love a great glass of wine, but sometimes wine can be a little intimidating. Whether you're out at a restaurant and you're not sure what to order on the menu, or you're at a store and you're just overwhelmed by bottle after bottle, now there is a new website that will make wine more accessible to the average wine drinker, snooth.com. I'm here with Rich Tomko, CEO of Snooth Media. Thank you so much for having us here today. Absolutely. Nice to be here. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. So, Rich, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about Snooth. Can you just give us, um, overall in general, what can we find on snooth.com? I think you teed it up really well, right? We are absolutely trying to make wine more accessible for every level of user, right? From the novice to the enthusiast to, to someone who's just enthusiastic about wine. So we're trying to do that in a variety of ways. Um, Snooth.com really allows people to search for wine, find it, find similar wines, and then find out where they can actually buy it. And we do that a number of different ways through data, um, through editor original editorial that we do, and also aggregating a lot of different voices that are talking about wine on the web so there's a one spot, one spot on the web that you can actually find that information. And that's what snooth.com is trying to do. And I did notice you had a very large database, so that's great for everybody. I also um, noticed that you have a, a pretty cool mobile app. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. The mobile app's really an extension of what we're trying to do on the site. But obviously, we have the, the ability to geolocate uh, a user, right? So users come to the site. Um, or come to the app. It's an iPhone app. We don't have an Android out yet. Um, we have a free and a paid version of the app. The free, the free version allows a user to come in and they can search by wine or find a wine store near them, right? So that's where the mobile aspect comes in place. So you can go around anywhere in Manhattan or any city or part of the country um, and search on a, um, just hit wine store and automatically up will pop all the wine stores in your area and then you can browse their inventory that they actually have in store that you can go and buy that very moment. Right, so that's pretty cool um, to have real-time pricing for specific wines in your area. Um, on the flip, you can also search for wines by, wine, by the wine name itself. Um, so again, you sort of go through that process. On the free version, you can type in the name um, and again, you'll find the wine, and then it'll tell you exactly where you can find that wine to buy at that very moment. On the paid app, which is $5, um, we also allow users to um, take a picture of the wine label. Um, so you can actually take a picture of the wine label. Um, we have a million, one million high-res images in our database. So you can take a picture of the label, send it to our database. Our database will then t return the exact wine match for that particular label that you're looking at. Um, so again, and just an, an easier way, perhaps, for some to find the wine they're looking for. Absolutely. And at the very least, it's just great that you can go by neighborhoods so people can know locally wh what's available to them. Love that. And I know you, you also just launched um, something new called the Wine Rack, which is kind of inspired by social gaming. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it, it is. It's a lot like Foursquare and others go all like it. Um, that do social gaming, but what we're, we're trying to do is obviously it adapt it, that concept to wine. Um, so we're trying to entice people through a gaming aspects of completing flights of wine, um, earning trophies for different ways of, of either tasting wine or reading about wine. So that's, we're a little bit different than some, right? So some things you have to actually take an action to actually get a badge or a trophy. With Wine Rack, um, there's two ways you can get a trophy. Right. One is taste the wine and then write, write, a, write a review, right? So then very clearly we know that you've tasted um, a certain number of wines, right? And we have, I think, I last count, maybe 75 trophies. Um, and the trophies are set up, as you might expect, it, it's sort of like earn your colors, right? So you taste one red, one white, one rosé. Or it could be taste, uh, get your Rioja traveler, right? Rioja is a wine region in Spain. So taste three wines from Rioja and get a trophy. And what we're trying to do is give people starting points to get into and understand wine, right? So wine's a pretty massive topic. And it's hard to kind of think about it in, in, 
in the, the whole realm of what's possible, right? Because there's regions and there's types of grapes and there's blends and there's a lot of different ways to think about it. What we're finding is that the, the easiest way for people, especially novices, to dip into it is to dip into it based on a, a starting point. And that starting point could be the grape or it could be the region. And what the trophies are trying to do is just embody that concept. So start somewhere, earn a trophy, drink three reds, or maybe a white, but typically a red from Rioja. Mm -hmm. And then you get a sense of what Rioja is all about, right? Earn your trophy. And then you move off and you do, you know, maybe it's uh, the central coast of California, right? And you, you try grapes from there, or it's, or it's some Oregon and the Pinot Noir, or, or whatever it is. It's, the trophies are really a way to just have a place to, to, to ground you and to start your adventure. And that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're really trying to help people discover wine and, and give them reasonably well-lit paths to do that. It's a fun way to learn. And of course, any, any opportunity for a tasting is a good opportunity. And then, and then last, I know that you guys have been doing some really interesting things on Twitter to help people learn about different varietals also. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same sort of idea. Uh, so every month we're, we're, um, we're highlighting or, or celebrating a particular grape. Now, last month was Pinot Grigio. It was uh, supposedly for some parts of the U.S. actually hot, and that would have made a lot of sense. In other parts, it wasn't so hot. But Pinot Grigio, we celebrated P Pinot Grigio last month, and this month we're celebrating Cabernet. And, and again, it's, it's just to, to put a spotlight on that particular grape, because again, it, it's a good starting point for people. Um, so for Pinot Grigio, last month, we, there's four different um, styles of Pinot Grigio, so we talk about that. Right, um, and we talk about the regions where they're developed, and so editorially, we're creating a lot of content around that. Um, we're also tasting a lot of Pinot Gris or Cabernet this month, um, and we'll continue to do that uh, month after month. And uh, so it's pretty exciting. Obviously, we're using Twitter uh, and Facebook to try to get the word out. Um, so we're using the hashtag GTI, which is our global tasting initiative. Bit of a mouthful. So GTI um, Cabernet. So slash uh, hashtag. GTI Cabernet is what we're trying to do. And then as, as the months go on, you'll, can, you'll continue beyond Cabernet and do each of the varietals. Absolutely. And, and some of it will be it, attuned to the calendar, right? So mm -hmm. the last half of this, actually December is a little bit split because um, Malbec works really nicely with, with uh, Christmas. But then, you know, as you get halfway through the month, you start to think about, you know, celebration. So we'll do the sparkling wines then. So Prosecco, Champagne, Cava, th those sorts of wines we'll celebrate in the second half of December. Yeah, but every, every month's the same. We'll, we'll celebrate something new. And again, it's, it's, it's a way to help discovery. Well, I love how you're using media and technology to make wine more accessible to, to everybody, not just the connoisseur. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, we, we really try to use... Um, all the tools we have, right, to, to make to make wine accessible, and and certainly from a technology standpoint, we do some of the things that are hard for some companies to do, which is really using um, algorithms to to slice and dice data to make it more understandable. So, with five million wines in our database, uh, it's a lot of wine, and how do you make sense of it, right? But it's well structured, um, so we can say if you like this wine. You, you'll likely like these other wines, right? So if you like a Sonoma, let's say a Sonoma Coast Chardonnay, um, we can tell you other Sonoma Coast Chardonnays. We can move you up price point. We can tell you um, Chardonnays that, that taste like Sonoma, um, but in different other regions of the world. So we can do that all algorithmically because we understand wine very well. Um, and we can also, because we know it well, we can tell you how to pair it with food um, because all foods have... Or, or all dishes or, or, or recipes have certain characteristics that make it more or less relevant for a particular type of wine. So we do that, we help discovery through algorithmically. We also, we have a social network on our site, um, but it's loosely tied into Facebook, but we'll be moving more, more so in that direction in the coming months. But we have 850,000 members on our social network, so you can follow a friend and they can help you pick grapes um, and help you sort of understand what's going on and at least in their palate and why that might work for you. So it's been really interesting. Our, our last, our, or I should say our latest um, technology feature is wine press, which is pretty ambitious. It's, it's, it's trying to do a bunch of things. It, it's, it's an RSS reader, a Tumblr, a blog platform, and a Q&A platform all rolled into one. It's, 
it's, it's incredibly ambitious, but what we're trying to do, and I mentioned this earlier, is create a one-stop shop for understanding wine. And whether we create it originally, and we create a lot of original content, or we use the data that we have, or we just link out to other people that are talking about smartly about wine, we want people to come to one place and, and search on wine and figure out exactly um, where their next step should be. And so it's been an, an interesting thing. We launched about a month and a half ago. Um, uh, and and wh what you're able to do is go to the site and, and type in, what's your favorite wine? Uh, I really like Muscadet. Muscat? Yeah. Oh, you could type that in, <laughs> and you would have all of the articles written um, from a curated point of view on the web that, that are talking about Muscadet. Right in one place, and again, whether we wrote it or somebody else wrote it, we don't care. We'll we'll, we'll send you to the right source, um, or at least what we think is the right source. Um, so Wine Press is pretty interesting for us. It launched about a month ago, and we'll be doing some other things too to leverage technology just to make it again more accessible. It's a fun, fun topic, and it's just a matter of getting in there, getting a hold of a bit of information uh, to really understand like that magic that's that's really part of what wine's all about. Well, that's the key, I guess, making it accessible. So thank you so much for chatting with us today. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. So whether you need a Wine 101 or you're a wine connoisseur, there's something on smooth.com for wine lovers of all levels. Go to smooth.com and check it out. Join us next time. That's really good. That's such a cool idea. How did you, yeah. how did you come up with this?